Is the Canon 85 millimeter 1.2 worth the money? Let's find out. All right, it's an age old question, right? Is the RF 1.2 worth the money? At $2,600, this is not an inexpensive lens by any means. Uh, especially when you have comparable lenses at 1.4, 1 1.8 1 uh, that are about $1,000 less, maybe even more if you're looking at a 50 millimeter lens, things like that. Uh, and so every photographer I talk to, they're constantly wondering like, is it worth that extra $1,000? Because I don't know if you know your f-stops, right? But it's f1, which there is an f1 lens. I definitely want to get my hands on that, but I'm pretty sure nothing's in focus. f1 uh, to 1.4 is one full stop, to 2.0 is a full stop, to 2.8 is a full stop. So the RF uh, 1.2, or any lens that's 1.2, is a half stop. Difference, so if you get a 1.4 or a 1.2, it's a half stop difference between those two lenses. So is it worth that extra thousand dollars for that extra stop? Here are some things to consider. If you are a wedding uh, or indoor portrait photographer, that extra half a stop is worth it because it gives you less ISO. If you're working in that church, uh, low light conditions, uh, you're gonna save that half stop, which you're gonna pull back on ISO, right? So less noise. As a portrait photographer or even doing outdoor work, senior photographer, family uh, photography, boudoir, you wanna create a little bit more depth of field, right? You want that fall off uh, there. And for me, every extra stop of light uh, for that bokeh, that depth of field, uh, is worth it. Now, you need to see those results. Do you really believe it's worth it? Now, I can tell you, as somebody who has this 85-1.2, I use it all the time. I'm constantly shooting wide open, right? I don't wanna shoot, I don't wanna get a lens like this to shoot at 5.6, that makes no sense. So if you're doing studio work and you're shooting at 5.6, f11, it makes no difference. It is a waste of money. But if you're out here, you're gonna see these results. We're gonna do a little photo shoot here. We got a stylized shoot. Uh, I think you'll see the difference and I'll walk you through as we go. So let's get on the shoot. All right, so one of the main reasons I like it is for that shallow depth of field. So here, what I've done is you need what we call eye candy. So anybody who's into cinema, you understand what that means. It's that kind of like foreground, makes it a little bit more interesting. If you're just taking a flat picture, uh, meaning there's no depth to the frame, there's nothing in front nor behind your subject, you're not gonna really see the benefit of, an, of a 1.2 lens or anything that's really fast for that matter. You might as well shoot it at 5.6. So to really take advantage of working something at 1.2, you have to create depth and interesting layers. Layers is probably the better word uh, to think about. So on this particular shot, I'm kind of like burying her in here because I wanna shoot through all these layers and I want all these layers to be blurry versus everything being in focus. When it's blurry like that, the foreground and the background, the subject's gonna pop off. So I'm gonna take this frame, I'm gonna show you at 1, 2, I'm gonna show you at F6, and I'm gonna show you at F11, and we'll see what you think is more visually pleasing. So let me know in the comments what, what which ones you like, but let's do this. All right, so we're gonna take this picture at F11. Here we go, 1, 2. We're gonna go at 5.6, 1, 2. And then we're gonna go at 1.2, 1, 2. Chin this way just a dinch. Yep, right there. One, two. One, two. Okay. So I'm hoping you guys see. Let me get here a little closer with her. Close your eyes, relax for a second. I'm gonna give you three count. When I do, you just look at camera. Here we go. One, two, three. Beautiful. One, two, three. Beautiful. So I'm hoping you guys see the difference. <laughs> I mean, it is it is a significant difference as we pull these up on the screen and you look at F11, at F11, everything's in focus. Every branch, every leaf, uh, she's in focus, the background's in focus, and so you see every bit of garbage that's in your frame. As we go to 5.6, it's pretty much more the same. But the minute we get to 1.2, her eyes are tack sharp, she's popping off uh, of, the, of the frame, uh, and it, uh, to me, it's visually more pleasing. That's what all those layers we're shooting uh, through create for us. So, Let's flatten it out a little bit now. Let's put her, uh, let's shoot straight back uh, into this. Again, there's depth to the shot, right? So it doesn't always have to be in the foreground and background. Uh, now we'll just have some depth into the background uh, to make it more interesting. So let me get you, let's go over here. All right, so for something like this, this could be a typical high school senior shoot, something like that, although your seniors probably aren't running around and like, you know, pink pimp jacket, so all she needs is a hat and a feather and she's ready to go. Um, but, right, you know what I'm saying, stylized shoot, 
you're in a park, you're in a parking lot, you've got very limited space. How do you kind of blur everything out and make us focus on your subject, your senior? This is something I have to do with my weddings a lot. This is something I have to do with seniors a lot, where we have, I mean, look around. This is not exactly, it's a parking lot, right? So I'm trying to make use of the parking lot and I'm using the gear, the lens, the focal length, the depth of field uh, to do that, okay? Right there, stunning. All right, so I'm gonna shoot this at one, two. Beautiful, here we go, one, two. Now I'm gonna go to five, six. One, two. One, two. Now I'm gonna go to F11. One, two, one, two. I mean, these are night and day, guys, on uh, the way they're looking. And so you've ultimately got to make that decision on what you're going to like. But as you're pulling these images up uh, on the screen, if you look at F11, I mean, literally everything's in focus. Um, five, six, even the background is a little softer, but it's not pulling uh, completely off. It's not falling off. And when you get to one, two, she is just popping off that background. Uh, and I think that's, that's really important uh, to the final overall uh, image. All right, now I'm gonna take a portrait the same way. Now this is, this is always something that photographers get really bent on, uh, especially portrait photographers. I love shooting portraits at one, two. And the reason I like shooting at one, two is because while the eye will be in focus, the skin starts getting nice and soft naturally without Photoshop because it's all blurring, right? Think about how they do skin softening in Photoshop. They blur the skin, that's how they do it. Uh, here we're doing it naturally uh, for that. And so just something to consider as you're working, I like that look. Some photographers don't, portrait photographers, you know, they start freaking out uh, and they wanna shoot at five, six or F8. You be the judge, you tell me in the comments which one you like. First shot we're gonna do is that, I'll start at F11. Let's do a portrait at F11. We're gonna do F11. Let's take this, looking at me. Here we go. One, two. Watch that blinking, one, two. Good, now I'm gonna go to five, six. One, two. Now I'm gonna go to one, two. Here we go. Soften that expression. Yep, chin to your left, just a dinch. Yep, looking right at me. Close those eyes, here we go. One, two, chin down, one, two. Beautiful. All right guys, hopefully you're enjoying the channel. Give us a like, support the channel, man. Subscribe to the channel so we can do more videos like this uh, in the future. But, which one was your favorite? Uh, so hopefully you're digging the 1.2. I think it goes without saying, I'm a little biased. I think it is absolutely worth the extra money. And just a little tip, if you're still watching this video at the end, in my opinion, uh, spend the money on your glass. Your glass will last you for years. Some of the lenses I've had uh, prior to the mirrorless systems coming out, some of the lenses I've had, I've had for 10 plus years. So make the investment in your glass. Your camera bodies will evolve over time, but your glass is the most valuable asset. So if you've got the budget and you can afford it, the F1.2 is absolutely worth the money. Go get it.